Christmas, brothers and sisters. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Wow. How you guys doing this morning? Yeah. It is Christmas. We're celebrating Christmas today. You guys should be fired up. You know, I know uh, each of you know that today is our special Christmas service. And I don't know about you, but I know today for sure is one of my favorite services of the year. Because we have the toy drive going outside. We get to sing awesome Christmas songs. And we get to see the kiddos perform, which is always super cute. Yeah. But for me, the biggest reason, though, why I love this service is because we get to celebrate a miracle, yes. don't we? Yes. A miracle that has changed our world for the better. A child was born on this day. And now, not just any child, but the Son of God. God came down to earth, was born in the flesh. And walked among us. And that same child, the one famously born in an angel to the Virgin Mary, became our Savior. This is Christmas. Right? This is the Christmas that we know and love. You guys with me? But now the title of the message when a mother this saw what this doctor was doing to her daughter. Simply this, she don't knows. miss Christmas. Don't miss Christmas. Some of you hearing that. I'd be saying, Chris, no way. I would never miss Christmas. I'm already on my fourth time watching the Elf. Watching Elf movie. I saw what this I started. I started listening to Christmas music on November 1st. Hot cocoa has become a normal part of my diet for like a month and a half. <laughs> Me missing Christmas, no way. Never gonna happen. But you see, the thing is, missing Christmas is actually something that many of us can do if we're not careful. Because the truth is, we as people, we can actually miss stuff pretty often. Yes. Regardless of how long we've been on this earth, there are things in life that seem so obviously true, but we still end up missing it. Things go over our head easier than we think that they do. For example, here are a few facts that I found online that seem so obvious, that seem so clear as day, but I'm pretty sure some of you probably missed it. First one here. Did you guys know that Corella DeVille, you know, she was a famous Disney villain. Her name, Corella DeVille, is used to describe her as a person. She's a cruel devil. Do you guys know that? You know that she's a pretty mean person, right? She, I think she wanted to take these dogs and make them into clothes and stuff like that. Like, she was mean. Yeah. But that was a play on words there that I don't know if you maybe missed that. Another one. So this is a division symbol. Did you guys know that the, the division symbol is just a fraction and those two dots represent numbers? That's what division is, right? It's just a fraction. I, I saw that, I was like, no way, I didn't know that. Another one. So this is, who is this? This is Eeyore. Okay, so Eeyore is a donkey. Did you guys know that his name Eeyore is the sound that donkeys make? Eeyore. Did you guys know that? It's crazy, right? This last one really blew my mind. So uh, growing up, my one of my favorite shows was the Teletubbies. Did you guys know that Teletubbies? Tell me, yes, okay, so if, if you knew all those facts, you just better than me, because I had no clue about all four of those. It blew my mind, but when I found these out, though, when I read about these on the line, I was like, how in the world did I miss this? These were so obvious, so clear as day, but the reason why I think I missed these obvious facts is because I don't think I was paying attention to them. So, Chris? I was not actively looking or watching for these things. Because I mean, let's be honest, these facts, although some of them may be cool, they're not the most important thing in the world. So why do I share this? Is it possible that some of us can do the same with Christmas? Yeah. That we're watching and we're waiting and we're prioritizing the next Amazon holiday sale. We're not paying attention for our city. And it's so easy for us to miss Christmas because we forget what's really important. We get preoccupied with the parties and the dinners and the gifts and the decorations and the family gatherings. But we forget the most obvious, the most clear as day fact that there is Christmas is not about any of this stuff. Christmas is about Christ. Right. And what's crazy too is as I was reading through the Christmas story again this week, it struck me how even on the first Christmas, 
Believe it or not, there's some people who missed it. Even on the first Christmas, some people received the miracle of Christmas with, with open arms, and some, unfortunately, did not. Turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, we're going to read just three verses today, verses 1 to 3. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, this is, this is what it says. It says, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. Let's stop right there. So what we learn from this passage is two groups of people who either miss Christmas or embrace it. The first group is the Magi. We also know them as, as the wise men. So who are these wise men? Around this time, there's a group of intellectuals from eastern lands, likely from Persia or Babylon, that would be either priests or scientists or interpreters of special signs, but they're most notably known for being experts of astrology. So now in this instance, God somehow communicates to these men that a king was going to be born. So this then prompts them to follow a star in the sky in hopes to see this newborn king and offer him the famous gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But now, what's so special about these wise men? What's so special is they didn't miss Christmas, did they? They ask, where is this king? Where is this king of the Jews? Because when we find him, we want to worship him. They understood the gravity of this miracle, so they stopped what they were doing, traveled probably hundreds of miles to just get a glimpse of this Jesus. They didn't miss Christmas. Now, not everyone had that same reaction, though. We also learn about a man named King Herod. King Herod heard about this and didn't have the same reaction as the Magi. But now, who was King Herod? So King Herod was the son of Herod the Great, and what we learn from the scriptures about this man is, is number one, he was not the nicest guy, number two, he kind of had a weird life. For example, we learn about later, King Herod divorces his wife and marries a woman named Herodias. Just think about that for a little bit. King Herod marries a woman named Herodias. A little interesting here. But now, he then divorces his wife, marries a woman named Herodias, but now what's interesting is Herodias was his half-brother's wife. Can you imagine how awkward those family functions must have been for them, right? So he marries his half-brother's half wife in Herodias, and then John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, confronts the, him on this odd relationship, and then, as a result, John the Baptist gets put into prison and later executed. All that to say, kind of a weird life, not the nicest guy. What we learn about King Herod, though, is that when he heard about this Messiah being born, when he heard about this king, how did he respond? It says here, he was disturbed. And what's crazier, too, is that he was not the only one that was disturbed about this fact. It says, all Jerusalem with him. Both King Herod and Jerusalem were disturbed. <clears throat> Rather than embracing this, this miracle, 